Hello, Instagram. I am ready to do another session with Doc Swiner, Dr. Nicole Swiner, to talk about uh, the coronavirus. Some things have changed since our last conversation. States are starting to open up. Our state is starting to open up. Um, and we need to talk about it. And I want to know what is going on with this vaccine situation. Let's get Doc Swiner on so we can figure it all out. Because I like to hear from doctors. All my Facebook friends claim they know everything, but they really don't. They don't know everything, Nicole. <laughs> Facebook people think they do, but they do not. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining the us. The Facebook MDs and PhDs. <laughs> Listen, they're epidemiologists and everything. It's crazy. How are you, everybody? You know, <laughs> two weeks left for homeschool. Uh, is it two weeks? I don't, is it? For us. I, I have no us, concept yeah. of calendars anymore. Hey, yeah, it feels hey, like another in. million years. Hey, to everybody that's joining us. So, some things have changed. We haven't talked in a couple of weeks, and things are different. North Carolina uh, was started opening up on Friday at 5. Technically, most stores started opening on Saturday. I don't know if you saw the video. Did you go to TJ Maxx? Did you go to Marshalls? Girl. Uh, did you go to Best Buy? Girl, that line outside of TJ Maxx, uh, I saw it on Twitter. I was like, what are they trying to, what, they just trying to get dog beds and pillows? Like, what? What is in TJ Maxx that they are lined up for? I need to know. I've been in that TJ um, Maxx a million times. Ain't nothing in there that makes me want to stand outside in a line with a bunch of people. You know, people just, you know, that, you know, I guess the, the, the feeling of getting out to your favorite store, being in the store, being able to touch the items, you know, it feels like real life. I'm, I live in Durham, uh, FYI, for the listeners. So um, it was the same in Briar Creek. You know, people were hustling and bustling and moving about, you know, and, and definitely, you know, had to, had to go to Target, uh, to do some shopping, had to go to Food Lion and do all those things. Um, you know, I, I think people were fairly well behaved. Like I mm -hmm. saw 40 to 50% of people with masks on. I wish more would have had their masks on. Um, but people seem to be social distancing. Like nobody was like all up, you know, in my space mm -hmm. or on my back in the line. And, uh, mm -hmm. the workers certainly had their gear on. So, you know, but you know, was I going out to Crabtree? <laughs> no, I wasn't going to walk around them. Was the mall even open? I don't even know about that. Yes. It was. Yeah. The mall started opening on Saturday morning. Um, so, and then like places like North Hills mall, some stores open, some stores didn't. I saw that Ross, um, did not open. But like other stores like Ross were open. I was at the house. I, I, I saw everything on the news and on social media. I was right here chilling. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I was I was broadcasting on on Saturday morning from my ba my bathroom closet. That's 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 where I was. So <laughs> <laughs> so I like to get your opinion as a real doctor, not as a Facebook doctor, because you know we all got Facebook doctor friends, epidemiologists, virologists, all of those. Um, so what do you think? Like I was reading, I have some relatives who live in South Carolina and I was reading today that uh, South Carolina restaurants are starting to open. I saw a video on Twitter this morning of a like breakfast place in, it may have been Colorado. I don't, I don't remember what state. It was slam packed. There were people waiting outside the restaurant was saying that it was their biggest Mother's Day crowd in years. Like, everybody was on top of each other like this. So, as a doctor, how do you feel about that? What does that make you think? Because I, I majored in journalism, not in doctorism, and it terrified me. <laughs> so, you know, I say God bless them because I know that people have been antsy and crawling up the walls and just wanting to get back to some sense of normal life. I get it. I get it. But it, I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I, I don't know if these folks just don't, you know, they felt some sense of security 
you know, once the government started saying, okay, y'all, you know, we're going to reopen, let's everybody go for it, open the businesses, let's go. Whether that gave people a sense of security in terms of the medical stuff, but, you know, people realize this doesn't mean that it's safer outside medically. It means that, you know, depending on your opinion, it means that businesses uh, wanted to, needed to open. Um, and that, you know, a lot of my, my medical colleagues have been posting this meme that says it also means that there's more room for you in the ICU, which is horrible. Yeah. But I mean, if you look at numbers, you know, so when this first, when this first happened, we had the crowding of all the, you know, the patients in the hospital, and we were running out of ventilators, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that has slowed down because we figured out, you know, some ways of treatment and thankfully we've had, you know, survivors of this thing. So we've been able to discharge them down the hospital. So now there's more room. There's mm-hmm. more space. Right. We have more testing available. Right. So we have room for you, which means, OK, if you want to go out and risk it, you know, that doesn't mean that you, the, the likelihood of, of you getting it is lower. It actually probably means it's higher. But, you know, we're not overwhelmed as we as much as we were in the beginning when everybody, you know, when all the cases were happening at one time. So take that as you will, whether that makes you feel more comfortable or not, it certainly does not make me feel more comfortable. Um, And just, you know, just be smart, folks. Like, how smart is it to go and sit, you know, shoulder to shoulder with somebody at a a dining table, you know, out in public? Like, is that really what should we, you know, what we should be doing? How, How necessary is it to go into the stores and touch all the stuff that someone else came and rubbed their nose and touched? Like, is now the time to do that? That's what you have to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a cousin who lives in the area. God bless him. He sent me this video that has been going around. um, And and it's been deleted from YouTube multiple times. It features a a woman who's a scientist who claims Fauci is in on it. And they're, they, you know, are doing all of these things to the vaccines. And it came off very anti-vaxxer to me. Um, apparently, this woman was arrested. She said she was arrested and, and her research was stolen and all of this stuff. And so apparently, um, this video has been making the rounds on social media. And in the video, there are some doctors who have gained some internet fame and have been embraced by Fox News who are like, we're doing it all wrong. When you stay home and you don't come into contact with people and you clean surfaces constantly, you're lowering your immune system, which makes your chances of getting the virus higher. So what we need to be doing is not wearing masks and not uh, sequestering ourselves in our homes and not cleaning constantly because that's just ultimately going to make you sicker. And so what do you say? And I I actually almost sent this video to you the other day because I was going back and forth with my cousin. And I know, right? I I saved you. I I was going back and forth. For my own mental health. (laughs) Girl, I was like, I have so many questions because in the age of fake news and propaganda, like there's nothing that tells me that these men in scrubs are even doctors. I can get scrubs at Walmart. Like that don't mean you a doctor. Just because you got a microphone in front of your face in your kitchen, I have a microphone in my kitchen downstairs right now. Uh, I got microphones all over the house. That doesn't make me a doctor. So two people who are are seeing things like that and going, well, Fauci's in on it, and they don't want uh, the they don't want there to be a cure or a vaccine until everybody has it. So everybody's infected, and then people are like, yeah, that's right. We don't need to be wearing masks. And I wonder if that's why there's this big movement against wearing masks. You've seen the protesters on social media that get in the faces of the the media people that um, say that, like, I think I saw a clip from some person on Fox News last week saying social distancing is ridiculous and we need to be in everybody's spaces so that we can deal with it. And then I saw the story about the coronavirus parties happening in Seattle, where I guess I was just going to say, it. let's go back to chicken pox parties like we used chicken to back in the day. Yes, Except but not like, many people die from chicken pox. That's that. That's, right. That's a this is a hundred times more deadly than chicken pox. And, you know, so I guess these are the people that think they're doctors that are like, oh, we just all need to be in a room together with someone who has it. We'll get it and then we'll get over it and it'll be fine. 
What do you say we'll to all of this? And we'll survive because we're not going to end up on ventilators because we're young enough and we're healthy. And it doesn't affect young, healthy people ever at all. We'll be okay. Yeah. So what do you say to combat all of these mixed messages that people have access to now? Yeah. So what I've learned, (laughs) the longer I've been in medicine, the more I've learned to protect my own mental health. Hmm. And part of that has to do with not arguing with fools. I don't argue with fools. So if I think that someone is coming to me with some foolishness that as far as I'm, you know, my experience is concerned and my thought process and my medical training and my medical knowledge and my research, if I think it's foolishness, I'm going to tell you once or twice, I think you are, you, you have misread, you misunderstand. This is what I believe, you know, as your trusted provider, as your trusted colleague, et cetera, this is what I believe you get to make the final choice and that's that so i you know if you know if fox news were to call me and say we'll come and argue the point and talk to these people and no i wouldn't do that i would go by what makes me feel most comfortable for the safety of my family if it makes you feel comfortable and it makes you feel like a good citizen to go out potentially asymptomatic and spread disease to your Mm -hmm. fellow man whose immune system may not be as strong as yours, have at it, you know, have at it. If that makes you feel like an ethical (laughs) human being, so be it. But, and it all has to do with who you trust, you know, who, what, what side of the fence are you on? Whose team are you on? Um, You know, uh, me going to the Fox News crowd and Opposing what these doctors these doctors have said on Fox News really does me no good. They're gonna believe what they want to believe. So mm-hmm. for those of us who are making, you know, and I try not to down talk or degrade anyone for their personal beliefs. You know, this is mm-hmm. America. We all get to delete. We there's free will. You get to believe and do what you mm-hmm. want to do. But for those of us who are practicing um, you know, medically based, public health based uh recommendations Mm -hmm. i feel like the ones that are doing it will hopefully compensate for the ones who are not doing it okay and then let me say something about this whole immune system argument so i get what they're saying right so they're like why not let your kids go out and lick dirt because it exposes them to Mm -hmm. germs and they build antibodies and that's great right and it helps them fight off disease i'm not going to risk it (laughs) i'm not risking it Right. I I would rather wait on the research based medications, you know, with or without the side effects that we all know come with some of that stuff, vaccines with or without the side effects that we know would come. I, I would rather put my life in the hands of those people who are educated and trained to perform and do these things than to not clean my the surfaces of my home that other people have touched. I'd rather bet on that. So it all depends on what you decide. What team are you on? Whose side are you on? Well, you know, and to go along with the chicken pox theory, right? Putting, having chicken pox parties and getting everybody in a room to get exposed to chicken pox. I don't remember people doing that with HIV. Were there HIV parties? Wow. I don't remember There were, they just didn't know that they were. (laughs) (laughs) Surprise, you're at an HIV party. Like, I mean, like... So why is it that these people didn't pop up doing HIV parties, but now they'll do coronavirus parties? It's Russian roulette. It really is Russian roulette. Yeah. I, I, the other thing that concerns me is that, you know, when the leadership does not follow the guidelines, what are you to believe? Okay. So on one hand, we have, messages coming out of Washington that you need to social distance, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to wear masks. But then the people issuing these messages don't do that. Like, it's 50, 11 of y'all on the stage talking about the pandemic, ain't nobody wearing masks, y'all taking tours of places, ain't nobody wearing masks, and boom. The vice, now, yeah, the vice president went to the facility and didn't wear a mask. And now it's like, oh, y'all think you know about all the people in the White House that have the virus. You think you know, but you have no idea. Yes, we know about the press secretary 
who happens to be married to Stephen Miller. We know about 23 Secret Service agents who've tested positive, but what about the other 40 that tested positive that they're not really talking about? And I'm like, and then apparently, allegedly, the president is upset because there are people around him who have it, and he feels like his staff isn't doing a great job. It does not help when the leadership does not follow the guidelines. Like, how are you telling me to wear a mask and you ain't wearing no mask? And, you know, and I don't know how much stock they put in the stories that I hear because going to journalism school, you know, despite what you believe, you're taught to question both sides, right? So I don't mm-hmm. automatically not question the side that I believe just because I believe it. I question that side too. So I'm yeah. wondering, you know, is, is it that he really said that he feels like he would look ridiculous in a mask? I don't know. Is that true? I don't know. It could be. But it makes me wonder, why is he not wearing a mask? But Americans are being told to. And that might be why when you go to Target and the Big Lion and you see your fellow dermites walking around maskless, maybe that's why. Like, the president's not wearing a mask and the vice president's not wearing a mask. Is it really a real thing? Is it that serious? Do I really need to wear a mask? I don't think so. Let's just wait and see. You know, I think... (laughs) Yeah, I think unless someone close to you or you have been actually affected by this thing, uh, it really, some of the stuff is hard to believe. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, we had a, a great uncle pass away just recently. Um, so I, tr- I personally, because it has affected my family, believe mm-hmm. even more in what we've been doing. So it all comes down to who you believe, who you trust, and which side you're on, and you have to make your own personal decision. Um, And I'm hopeful that, you know, I'm hopeful that people don't necessarily feel more comfortable and go out and just, you know, for those that may have started off wearing masks and washing their hands a lot, and now that the states are reopening, they're like, okay, great, now we can get rid of all this stuff. You have to still be, you know, make smart decisions for your household. Make, just be smart, just be smart. It makes me well, sad. And I, I think <laughs> it, makes me sad. it makes me sad too. And and I feel like just because the states are reopening does not mean that the coronavirus got the memo. Like nobody told the virus, <laughs> you're over now. Like No. Our cases have done actually gone you. up since Friday. Our cases went up. Clearly. Clearly. Right. So, you know, nothing's changed with the virus, right? The virus hasn't changed the rate of infection hasn't really changed the deadliness of the it, virus. It went up the since, the, the since we reopened, it went up. I didn't want to be clear about that. Right. It did go up. So the only thing that has changed is human behavior. That's yeah. Well, that's so what's and changed is, yeah. So what's changed is, you know, we know a little bit more about it than we knew in March. We have more testing available so we can test mm-hmm. for it. We're, Mm -hmm. we're working, you know, the, the vaccine and the medications are in the first starts of the trials. Mm -hmm. Uh, we know some of the symptoms, so hopefully we can jump on it quicker and isolate people that are positive. Those are the only Mm -hmm. things that have changed. We still don't have a great way to treat it. We still don't have a vaccine. We still Mm -hmm. don't know how many people out there. Um, we, we, we know more about how many people might be asymptomatic walking around, but we still don't know exactly how many people. So you're absolutely right. Nothing has changed except for the need for businesses to reopen for multiple reasons, good and bad. Um, And we have more space available to take care of sick people. That's it. Wow. Okay. That's it. Is there anything else that our listeners, that's what I was about to say. Is there anything else our (laughs) listeners need to know? So I think that it's uh, what I do like about what our state is doing is I do like the fact that um, teleworking is still being encouraged. I'm still broadcasting here from the house. Thank you, Jesus. Very happy to be Mm -hmm. here and to help my little boy with his math. God, please pray for me, y'all, because I can't I can't I can't do math. We're doing fractions now. I'm like, oh, what a time to be out of school. But, um, you know, (laughs) he needs to be in there with his teacher. I can't help him. But, uh, you know, so I think that um, it's good that 
our state is still encouraging teleworking and that everything is kind of opening slowly. We're kind of tiptoeing into it. And I love the fact that Governor Cooper made it clear, like, we will go to phase two in two to three weeks if and only if the yes. numbers reflect, you know, yes. the movement that yeah. we need to see. Right. He's like, so y'all act up. We go right back. <laughs> Look, act up if you want to. The, the based on the videos I saw this weekend on Instagram and Twitter, I was like, y'all acting up. Y'all out there, like, y'all in these coronavirus streets for real. So um, I'm, I'm encouraged that we are not just going through it like Atlanta or I think Missouri was scheduled to start concerts again this week. Um, South Carolina is opening restaurant dining uh, facilities, so you'll be able to go into a restaurant and actually – sit down and eat so i'm glad that we are easing into that and not just kind of running yeah. full force ahead into it can you hear me by the way my family has gotten loud downstairs <laughs> yes i can hear you <laughs> i'm recording an instagram so some, live people um so, so somebody <laughs> asked a question do you think we'll continue yeah, like this it. through the fall it seems as though month to month people are just not saying that we need to stay home i think we don't know at this point. Um, I, <sighs> with some of the reopening, what I think will happen is we'll hopefully, this is my prayer. I'm hopeful that we'll have more open outdoor spaces available this summer. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think that that necessarily means concerts and shows and movies. I think that means with social distancing, you know, will we be able to go to the beach sometime in the late summer and stay far away from other people maybe um mm -hmm. but i think we're probably well into the fall if not the end of the year when it comes to big um events gathering for or big people groups of people gathering for events you know concerts festivals you know movies you know all packed in together i think we're out. but with that we look into the fall and winter and then we're back into cold and flu season so, yeah. you know, with and I feel like by fall and by winter, you know, if somebody sneezes or coughs in a public space, I don't know that we're going to be prepared to like mentally deal with it. Is that a cold? Is that the flu? Is that the coronavirus? Like we don't we don't really know. So I'm worried yeah. that by the time we start to open up, the the inclination will be to close up again. Just because, I mean, we haven't really been through this formally. We we now know that there were cases of this virus in this country in December, maybe yep. earlier. But we don't really know what it's going to be like in the winter time. And then you add cold and flu season. I don't know. It yeah. makes me really nervous. You know. I'm hoping that by the end of the year, you know, potentially once the winter starts hitting, we'll have a vaccine available. And so people will start getting vaccinated. <laughs> I see your face. People will start getting vaccinated and or will have the medicine available. You know, the medicine that we're testing right now is not a brand new medicine. The medicine has been out. It's a certain antiviral that's been out that we've treated. You know, we use it to treat Ebola and other types of viruses. So I feel um, optimistic that the research can be done fairly quickly on that because it's not a brand new thing that we came out. You know, we've had this medicine um, you know, so I think the more that we know about what medicines might be able to treat it, no vaccine for me. I hear you. I hear you. It's, Chris, it's a difficult, it's going to be a challenging situation. It's going to be a challenging I mean, decision. The fact, it's, you know, the fact is, uh, no, I get it. It just, God bless you. know, how comfortable are you going to feel being the first internet? one in line? Right. How, but, you know, my kid has vaccines. We've had vaccines because back when we were growing up there wasn't a choice it, there was no anti-vaxxer movement it was like you can send your kid to school without vaccines if you want to that was not a thing um you know i'm very grateful that i've never had to deal with polio you know it's so i'm 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 pro vaccine i can definitely understand yeah, people being concerned about vaccines but you know think of all of the things that our kids don't have to deal with things that had have yeah. been eradicated because of vaccines you know correct um, correct correct but but like you know big chris is saying you know am i going to be the first one in line to get it i probably won't 
I'm going to look, I'm going to watch for some data first. And, and my concern is um, not necessarily will it work or not. It, my concern, mm -hmm. of course, would be, you know, side effects. So because it's a brand new one off on the market, it would be something I would look out. But, you know, six, 12 months down the line, it shows good uh, response and shows that people have tolerated fairly well. Then, yeah, I will. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you, Chris. It's it's a it's a really we've never been in an environment or time like this where you don't know right. how to, you don't know who to trust. Right. Well, Whose word mean, do you and trust? There's there and that's the thing. There's always been propaganda. There has always been false information. Um, that's not new. What is new is the access to the false information. So. You know, there are just as there are people that are out there saying, you know, the earth is round, the earth is round, the earth is round. There are still people that are like, trust your senses. The earth is flat. Don't believe this, you know, this media propaganda. And because we have access to messages that we didn't have access to in the 1930s, it makes you now question everything. And it sucks because you don't know it what to trust not. or what not to trust. But I do... I, I I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess you just have to read a lot and not just believe everything that people post on Facebook. Well, read and then have a conversation with a trusted, educated individual. You know, so I encourage my patients to come with me, come to me with all the dumb questions, quote, dumb. There's no dumb question. Um, come and talk to me about let's talk about it. Like, don't sit at home stewing and up till 3 a.m. and reading Wikipedia and WebMD all by yourself, bring in the article. Let's have a conversation, right? Talk to your medical provider about stuff so that you don't have to rely on your own, on your own suspicions, your own fears when it comes to saying, hey, Dr. Kanisha, Dr. Kanisha is one of my docs uh, on, the, on the front lines. So she knows what I mean. But I always encourage my folks to come in and let's talk. Let's talk. Whenever I, I, I mention WebMD, whenever I mention WebMD to my doctor, he goes, oh, what did I tell you about looking at that? He's like, well, you know we talked so, about this, Karen. I'm like, I know, yes. but it clearly says, he's like, oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm going to take your well, So by the way, I have a side gig. I'm one of the editors for WebMD. So what part of my job oh. is to decrease the amount of false information online. And so I'm going to be one of the ones I can't vouch for all the articles you read, but some of the articles will be edited and vetted by me. So I can say, Nope, okay. this is foolishness. Please don't tell, tell people this. And yes, this okay. makes sense. Let's, let's, let's spread this. So hopefully, you know, I think WebMD is trying to do a better, a better job with getting some, um, some MDs, some medical experts, on their side. <laughs> Dr. Kanisha say no. says she just laughs. She don't even get mad. He do not even get mad. He just puts his head down. I'm like, you need to work on your bedside manner. This is not helpful. When you're doing this to me and listen. shaking your head. <laughs> listen, he must, he must be like, have, he must have been in the game now for more than a decade like me. Like, I'm just like, yep. really? yeah. they're like, I, I knew you were going to look at me like that. I knew you, I knew that you were going to have that face. I'll be like, <laughs> Really? I'd be like, no, but hear me out. Oh, but hear me out. And then I did some. I hear you, Chris. Research. That's what I'm working on. That's what I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, listen. Thank you. So, so you are still, you're still sanitizing your groceries. You're still. Um, did you see that video that I posted on my Facebook and Instagram of the when everybody was calling the Chinese propaganda with the little boy coming to um, to school? And they sprayed the bottom. It looks like it was in China. They sprayed the bottom of his shoes. And then they he takes his little mask off. He throws it away. And then they make him, like, use hand sanitizer on his hands. And then he stands in front of a steamer. And they turn him around. And it steams his whole body, his book bag. And then he goes up to one of those wellness robots, which I understand are really big in China, where he looks in to the robot and opens his mouth. It takes his temperature, it checks his eyes, and then it gives a, a message like if he's got pink eye, if he's got foot and mouth, hand, foot and mouth, or whatever it is, if he's got an elevated temperature, and then he's free to go into the building. So I posted that on my Instagram page and my Facebook page the other day, and I was like, can we just do this? Can we just do this? Can we just like <laughs> sanitize the children and check them before they go into the school building so that we can feel better? 
you know. Yeah, I mean, to, I'm to down for it. them, like, checking their temperature, checking their temperature when they walk in, if they have a fever. Nope, got to go right back home. Well, one of my former brides, like you, on my Facebook page, um, uh, Angel used to, her husband used to play ball in Japan, and she said when she had her son in Japan um, in preschool, they made them take off their socks and shoes before they walked in the building, and they um, checked their temperature three times a day. They had to change their clothes in the middle of the day. She was like, they took it very seriously. They were like, y'all ain't finna been bring no disease up in here. She was like, if they were, you know, she's like, I cannot see Americans ever being down with that. You know, a, American parents would. would fight that. Oh, I would totally, I would. especially after this, check everybody multiple times a day. Yes. Sign me up That's for that right. service, please. I'm fine with so that. you're still sanitizing. <laughs> you're still, you're still like stripping at the door and wa- putting your clothes in the washer and showering before you hug your family you're still doing all of that and i think yep. that's important to hear because i i think it's helpful to know like what are the medical professionals doing when they walk in the house how like how are they you know how do they go from the outside world to home i think that's that's really good for people to know yeah oh many um, many, many have been trying to, been to, trying to tell your cousins yeah. yeah since we bought our our house since we bought the house and the kids were yep five days old we've been taking yep. our shoes off at the door and all of our yep. friends know that that's that's what we do we do it too ever since he was born and really when he started crawling i was like i don't want my baby mm-hmm. picking up nothing off of your shoes the only person who yeah. refuses to take her shoes off in the house is my grandmother and she's 92 and well I you know fight with her yeah you can't mm-hmm. you'll get popped you know i just yeah i will she will hit me she will pop me in the mouth and her hand is still real quick so I don't play. But well, when she's not looking, her. just like spray her shoes real quick with like Lysol. <laughs> like when she's not looking now, don't don't let her catch you. You can do that. Right, right, right. right. Uh, no, maybe I'll do that at night when she's sleeping. I'll I'll spray yes. her shoes. That's that's. Or uh, say, oh look, Grandma, I got you a whole new pair. Look at these brand new house house slippers I bought you. Look how cute. No. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. she 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 won't go for that. She wants the ones with the holes in them. Um, thank you so much for continuing to chat with us and keep us updated. Uh, before we get off, is there anything yeah, else start with you Kanisha, that's good. to know? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Anything? Oh, two, she said two wardrobe changes, completely disrobing in the garage, immediately shower. Listen, I'm surprised y'all doctors have not installed showers in the garage yet. At this point, I expect well. y'all to take it to the next level, have the shower in the garage, and then just walk into the house fresh. Some shower at the hospital and change clothes before they get in the car. Ooh, there you go. There you go. That's smart. Is there anything yeah. else you want our listeners to know before we uh, we conclude this IG Live? Yes. So I'm glad that here, at least in North Carolina, we've not yet opened up gyms, nail salons, salons, etc. Don't go to those places right now. If you're in other places, um, please don't go to the gym. Please don't go to the hair salon. Please don't go. Don't invite the barbers into the house. Please. It's still, it's still not safe enough to do that. Okay. Don't do it. Just wait. Just wait. We will get through this. Just wait. There's going to be some increases in the next couple of weeks with this uh, reopening. Let's wait and see it flattening and and be on the downturn again before we plan those trips, before we plan the cookout of, you know, 50 of our family members. Let's just wait a couple more weeks. Somebody said what about dental appointments? Yeah, as long as they only go for emergency. So I moved my dental appointment. I moved my kids' uh, physical appointments out until the summer. Um, Let's wait. If it's not emergent, let's wait. Right. I told my grandma that the other day. She was like, do I go to the podiatrist? And I was like, if you are in pain, if you are having issues, yes, go go to the podiatrist, wear your mask that I sent you. But if you just go in because it's your regular three-month checkup, no, we can reschedule it. And look, everybody's nails should look like mine. Like, see that? <laughs> I took mine off. This is regular polish. <laughs> I took mine off. That's right. You know, you can get look. some uh, acetone, some remover, do it at home, wrap it. I got a whole video. I sent it to you. Let, no, I, I've got, I've got like the little dipping things where you pour the acetone in each little thing and you put your nails in. Yeah. I just, yeah. It's it's amazing how much stuff I have to do at home that I have not had time in six weeks to sit down and do that. So I, I've got the I've got everything. Yes, telemedicine is the way. Telemedicine. That's right, Dr. Kanisha. Well, you know what? I think that um it'll be cool if like we I don't want this to be like 
oh, we use telemedicine just because there's a pandemic. Like telemedicine could be super convenient when yeah, we're I've out. I've been doing telemedicine pandemic. for two years. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm hoping what will happen is we'll still be able to do Instagram videos like this, you know, separate and apart from from the pandemic. I, would, I love doing interviews like this. I hope that we're still doing versus battles like Jill Scott and Erica Badu on Saturday. I don't want that to stop. I want it to no. keep going. Like yes. some of the things Agreed. that we've adopted, I want it. I want us to stick with it and keep doing it. So, yeah, all the DJ parties. I love it. I love all of that. It is so good. And like the little concerts, Hi, girl, the little living room concerts. Um, you know, I would love hearing Anthony Hamilton sing in his living room. I will. I'll do that yes. forever. Forever. So. Well, thank you, Doc Swiner. I appreciate you continuing to come on and educate our listeners and 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 keep us in the know and um, help us help us figure out what we should be doing and how we should be navigating all of this this craziness that we're in now. You're welcome. Y'all be safe. Just wait. Just wait a little bit more. Stay home. Just wait. Just wait. All right, we will. Thank you so much. I got to go get back on the radio, so I will talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. All right. See ya. Bye.